In this video, we're going to link Revit models from other disciplines, assign them to the work sets we've already created, and use the copy monitor tool to copy elements from other models into our model. The first thing that we want to do here is we're going to go to Insert and Link Revit. From here, I can select the model I want to link, structural model in this case, and I want to make sure the positioning is set to auto origin to origin. I'll go ahead and click open. And it's going to let me know that the structural model has a copy of the architectural model, which is a good thing because they built it based on the architectural model. And I'll just say closed because it's not going to be visible because it was an overlay in their model. And that's fine. The next thing I'll do is I will select that structural model. And I can change that work set from work set one to the link structural that I set. Now that that is set to the structural model, you can see that the other elements, like my walls, are set to work set one, whereas the structural model is now set to link structural. And what I can do is I can check that visibility by looking at the work set display. When I click on the work set display, I can turn it on or off. And what I like to do is I'll just check it based on work sets and it'll show me different colors for the elements that are on the different work sets. I can also set the settings to display only specific elements in color. So if I only wanted to see, say, what the structural model was on to make sure I didn't have anything else on that work set, I could do that and I can see, OK, well, here's the footings. Obviously, maybe a slab or a floor deck here are shown only in the structural model. One of the other things that I can do with a Revit link is I can copy and monitor certain elements. So in this case, since we didn't have the grids shown on, on the architectural model, we can go in and we can actually copy and monitor those elements into ours. It's called copy monitor because it's going to copy the elements from that structural model into the architectural model. And it's also going to monitor them every time we reload that link. So if there's something that changes, I'll get a notification saying that grid seven has moved uh, from its previous location. So to do that, I'll go to copy monitor and I'll go ahead and say select the link and I'll select the structural link. And what we want to do is we want to copy elements. So I'll go ahead and select copy and then I can pick the grids that I want to copy into my project. Once I've done selecting all the ones that I want to pick, I can hit Finish. And now you can see Grid A versus Grid C are now different. So C is part of the structural model still, whereas Grid A, you know, 1, 2, and 3 are all part of the architectural model, whereas before they were just standard links. Another thing I can do with my Revit links is I can run an interference check. An interference check is going to check to see if there's any clashes between either my model, the architectural model, or a linked model, or between two linked models. To do this, I'm going to go ahead and insert another link. And I'm going to link in the MEP model using the same auto to origin setting. Now I'm going to go to our Collaborate tab, and I'm going to find Interference Check here at the end. When I hit Run Interference Check, it's going to give me the option to run a check between my current project against one of these other two. Or I can run, say, Structural from my current project, or MEP from my current project. And what I like to do is I'll run MEP against something, a specific category that I have in my model. So I would pick maybe walls and floors just to see which one of these elements. We'll go with pipes and ducts because those are normally the larger elements. And I can go ahead and hit OK. And it'll go ahead and run a clash detection. 
and it'll give me a report that shows me where each one of these things goes through. And just like some of our other errors, what I could do is I could actually select it and I can have it show me where that clash occurs. And it'll try to find a good location to show that. And I can also use the element IDs to check that as well. This report can also be exported to an HTML format so I can use it to cross-reference at a later date when I don't have this open anymore. Switching the group by to a different category, I can see it a little bit differently, where it's going to show me pipes clashing with floors and each one of the instances. So instead of category one, which was floors to ducts, floors to pipes, I can switch it to pipes to floors, ducts to floors, that kind of thing.